Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. We're in our second part of our Bible study at Piccadilly Regardless Community Church. And don't forget, Friday night, 7.30pm, uh, Bible study. Also we have uh, a meeting at 11am on a Sunday and 3pm and, uh, Sunday afternoon. Uh, if you want to find out more details where it is, we meet on the north side of Manchester. If you go down to the doctrinal statement on the YouTube channel, you'll find contact details there. Okay. So we're looking at James. It's good to see you. And I just want to say to you that if you come to Piccadilly Gardens Community Church, um, we're not people of law. I don't. I don't want us to be people of law. I want us to be people of grace. So just come and relax and feel that you're not going to get pressurized to do something. We're not going to uh, try to find out all about you so that we can uh, put you in a box. Just come and be you, you know, and relax. <laughs> and if you want to stay with us and you feel called, great. If you don't, we it's okay. But we're just here to to be true Christians and true community of care okay so James let's pray Lord we just thank you for this lovely day and we pray that you be with us now in Jesus name amen and if you if you've been a pastor or an elder or a, a Christian worker or you know maybe you, you've been involved in some kind of church work in Manchester and somehow for, or for some reason you you've you've not gone to church for a while uh, you've been hurt by the church or whatever you know come to us because you know there's a home for you here and there's a work for you to do okay okay James chapter 1 James a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the twelve tribes scattered among the nations consider it pure joy my brothers whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance per perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking in anything so, so consider it pure joy my brothers whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance so the passage from verse 2 to 3 is one of trial and um, you know, a lot of people think that the Christian life is like a honeymoon. You know, somebody uh, gets married and they think it's just going to be fantastic and they don't realise that they're going to have problems in their marriage. And many people come to Christianity thinking that God's going to give them some candy floss and it's all going to be nice and it's like going to the beach in a, on a sunny day. But it's not like that. When you become a Christian, you, you become a soldier of Christ and you're in a spiritual battle and it's very difficult at times if we turn to Matthew chapter 5 verse 10 and 12 Matthew 5 Matthew chapter 5 um, verse 12 it says blessed are you who people insult you persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you rejoice and be glad great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you so the Lord is saying quite clearly there that you know you're going to get persecuted blessed are you who are persecuted who insult you etc and if you become a Christian you can't think well it's all going to be okay and everything's going to be fine because you're going to have difficulties if you turn to Luke chapter 6 verse 22 Luke 6 Luke chapter 6 verse 22 it says blessed are you who hunger now for you will be satisfied Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you. They will excuse you, exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. So as you follow the Lord, people are going to not like you. They're going to hate you. At work, at school, at college, at university, they're not going to like you for following Jesus. 
Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Verse 1 to 6. Is it verse 1 to 6? Yeah. It says, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character and character hope and hope does not disappoint us because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us because we know that suffering produces perseverance and God allows us to go through suffering and he allows us so that he can teach us to be patient teach us to be persevering in our walk with him but the idea that you can say, i become a Christian and everything's going to be okay, is not biblical. He said, yeah, I want a new car and I want a new house. I want this, I want that. So do little children, but little children don't get all that they want. You have to grow up and the desire of your heart is for God. It's for Him. And sometimes God will not give you things or will withhold things to teach you to, to persevere. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 6 and 7 he said Jay Jay but I struggle Jay I struggle mate I know you struggle mate I know you struggle but I'm trying to teach you to help you and encourage you I'm not not trying to put you down I'm trying to prepare you I'm trying to help you I'm trying to put put a fence around you to protect you to I'm trying to put foundations in you so that you can be strong I'm here to help you my friend I'm here to help you I'm here to help you and to strengthen you and to encourage you I'm here to help and encourage you too many pastors and preachers put their people down well, there's a time to rebuke and there's a time to thunder the wrath of God. But the people of God need lifting. The people of God need encouraging. The people of God need to know that we love them. That we care for them. That we want them to be lifted and strengthened. And I want you to be strengthened. I want you to be strengthened. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know as a child of God. We love you. We love you. 1 Peter 1 6. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perisheth through though refined by fire may be proved genuine and may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed though you have not seen him you love him and even though you do not see him now you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible glorious joy in the midst of trial and in the midst of suffering when you know God there is a joy and a peace that passeth all understanding. And you, but then you say, Jay, yeah, okay, there is a joy that passeth all understanding, but why do I have to go through this valley of the shadow of darkness? I don't like it, I don't want to go down it, and I can't cope with it, Jay, why? And you have to go down that path, because God wants to refine you, He wants to strengthen your faith, because it's more precious than gold to him. And then through that strengthening of your faith, he then wants you in your suffering to begin to praise him and to give glory to him. And then God wants glory from you. So that when people look at you, when people see you, they see you rejoicing in Christ and that brings glory to God. He said, Jay, my valley is so dark that I don't think I can praise God in this. You can't. You can't in your own strength. Who can in your own strength? I can't. You can't. We can't. 
We can't. But that's the beauty of Christianity because when we have no strength, all things are possible with God. When you have no strength, when you can't cope, when you can't go forward, then God takes over. God's power comes in. God helps you. God fills you. God does it. So when you come to the end of yourself in your suffering or in, in your situation where you feel you can't do it, a supernatural power of God comes and takes over, begins to fill you, begins to help you, begins to strengthen you. Rejoice in those times when you say, God, I can't do it. I can't do it no more. I cannot do it no more. And at that point, God comes and intervenes. Acts chapter 14, 22. We'll have one more passage. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Acts 14, 22. Strengthening the disciples and encourage them to remain true to the faith. And he says, Paul, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church with prayer and fasting. But Paul says, we must go through many... We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God going to be a battle it's going to be a battle folks imagine you're 16 years of age and you join the British army or the American army or your country's army okay you don't think when you join the army oh I'll join the army and they'll send me to a nice sunny beach and I'll just stay on that sunny beach all day and it's going to be lovely when you join the army, they, you know you're going to be sent to Afghanistan or some dangerous place. And when you come to know the Lord, God hasn't got you a sunny beach in store. He's got you a spiritual Afghanistan where you are going to have to wage war against Satan, the world, and, the, and, and all that is opposed to Christ. You are going to have to march forward as a soldier. And if you march forward in the battle, then you'll have wounds in the battle. Okay. Thank you for listening.